there, I'm Clean Living Mom and today we're going to be talking about how to know if the essential oil brand that you're using is legit. So I'm not going to be like mentioning any brand names in particular, I just want to give you guys all the information and sources that you need to be able to research this on your own. Because it can be kind of hard to know like where to start. So the two biggest things that uh, determine whether an oil is good and safe to use is the quality and the purity. So those are gonna be kind of what we're talking about today. So here are five different things to look for. Number one, does the essential oil brand um, list the botanical name on the label of the bottle and on the website? So like the Latin name, um, because this is very um, important information for people to know. Anyone who is trained would know that there are numerous different species of various different oils. So it's important to know which one you are buying. Um, so for instance, like frankincense has like, I think five different common species. Um, the Boswellia carti or um, Boswellia serrata, serrata, serrata. And uh, the Sacra, I'm saying them all wrong. You know what I mean? Um, so that is important information. So does the label have the um, botanical name and also does it list the country of origin because the country of origin which it uh, came from is really important because that determines a lot of the quality of the oil um, climate soil that sort of thing um, the temperature the altitude rainfall all of those um, things impact the uh, quality directly of the essential oil so knowing the country of origin that it comes from is extremely important in determining that okay number two um, do the bottles that they come in, um, are they glass and are they darkly colored? Okay. Some, um, I would be leery of like some brands that sell oils in a light colored one. Um, that's a pretty common across the board. Um, you know, so someone who's trained knows that, um, essential oils to best, uh, keep their purity and from oxidizing and whatnot, it needs to be in a dark bottle. Okay. Number three is price. Um, a great resource to look into is the EOU, um, Essential Oils University, run by a um, really experienced chemist in essential oils, um, does like a price check um, once, one day a week, and will tell you like the amount for including overhead of a company and, you know, uh, getting a really high quality, pure sourcing, you know, from wherever you're buying from or whatever, um, if they're uh, you know, harvesting themselves, blah, blah, blah. Um, he'll tell you like what would be a common, really good, solid price for that. So that's been a helpful resource just at least to start with. Um, but I would say um, if you're seeing like a rose oil for, you know, 20 bucks, that's a really good indication that that company is not a trusted, um, you know, legit company because that oil typically is way more expensive. Um, but on the flip side, I'll just throw out there as well that um, just because an essential oil is super expensive, that does not always mean that it's better quality. So just throwing that out there. Um, but it would be good just to kind of do research on how much it typically is and kind of price check it from different companies and from suppliers um, to kind of just get a better understanding for what the price of a certain oil should be. Okay, number four. How transparent is the company about their methods of um, extraction or harvesting practices, um, so on and so forth. All of these different things, their essential oils are so incredibly specific and particular and it takes so much expertise. Um, having a company that is extremely knowledgeable about what they do, why they choose to, um, you know, harvest it when they do, um, harvesting even like when something's had more rainfall than another or if that day was hotter than another, all of those things are going to play into how good of a quality that essential oil really turns out to be. So just um, looking at the resources that the company provides and also having conversations with, um, with them, like emailing them or something and asking them about this just to see how knowledgeable is a really, really good sign of, um, you know, just that they know what they're doing. <laughs> so, so a question that I get sometimes is, you know, is it concerning at all if a company kind of has their own lingo or like seal or uh, process that they use or do to like ensure their purity of essential oils? You know, is that sketch at all? I would say no, not at all, because honestly, there is really no regulation at all for essential oils of um, the processes to ensure a really good quality and purity oil. So I think it's a really good sign that every company has their own 
own process and the fact that they're very transparent about that process is a really really good sign just that again they know what they're doing they're doing their research and they're hiring experienced people to help them make those decisions so also looking at their staff and how experienced they are in essential oils uh, is a really big thing that plays into that also on that note um I, another question I get is what if the oil is or isn't USDA certified organic? Um, I don't particularly think that the USDA organic seal is as big of a thing as people think it is with essential oils. Um, so here's why though. I, I would say if, if an essential oil company is organic, USDA certified organic, that's great. But I, I wouldn't use that as like, oh, well this company isn't so I wouldn't use them. Because um, if the company is harvesting um, overseas, like a lot of these oils are in very like, you know, Asian or, you know, S South Africa and Yemen and like they're getting all these oils from all these different places I'd say it's better that they're getting the like the country of origin They're getting it directly from that country rather than trying to grow it in the US themselves um, Depending on the country. It's impossible actually to get that farm to be USDA certified like that stamp of approval really typically only applies to US based farms it's possible for some countries to get that but it's extremely difficult or just for some it's not even possible so I wouldn't put too much weight in that particularly uh, just for that reason right there okay so moving on to more the purity side of it number five is do they release GCMS testing documents proving the purity of their oils um, so this is the like equivalent if you will to a company putting fragrance on an agree on a label or telling you exactly what ingredients make up that fragrance um i would be very 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 concerned if a company doesn't um provide any kind of gcms testing that is the standard uh i honestly forget how to say that name gastro something spectrometry i can't i'm bad at, i need to know how to say that but i don't um that that testing process is the most standard uh, testing process for determining adulterations in oils and ensuring 100% purity. Because oils are so concentrated, um, it is so, so, so important for oils to be 100% pure with no adulterations. So that test is going to pick up both adulterations that that company would be purposely putting in synthetically or um, malpractices of some sort within the sourcing process or, um, I mean, it can even happen in like how it's transported and different things like that. There's just so, so, so many factors and also why it's so important that a company is knowledgeable about what they're doing because there's just so many ways for it to go wrong, if you will. So um, there has, I have seen um, different companies saying that they don't want to release their uh, GCMS reports because, especially for blends, because um, it's a possibility for other companies to look at the like chemical amount of each oil and sort of in a way copy um, their recipe. So again, very similar to like a, co a company saying, well, we're putting fragrance on our label because it's a proprietary blend and we don't want other people to steal it. Yes, that's sort of a thing. But a way around that is a company could always um, just do their single oils and not do um, their blends. So that would be like an effort to still be transparent and share what the um, that the individual ones are pure. Because then if the individual ones are pure that they're using, then the blends are going to be fine. So if you see that the company just releasing the singles, I wouldn't be concerned. I'd say that's just a way for them to try to um, keep that recipe more for certain blends proprietary. I would be concerned if a company doesn't want to share either. Um, so the other side of that as well is it's very, very, very important what third party lab they use to, to test the purity of those essential oils. So um, there are, this could be honestly a whole other video, but um, just a couple of things off the top of my head that I can think of of ways to know if that lab is reputable and really good um, is do they have experienced people like just look at the experience level of the members on staff at the lab how long have they worked with essential oils what kind of like training have they had um, just the level of expertise the chemist has that's doing the reports is so incredibly important. Um, another thing is just does the lab specialize in essential oils? If they specialize in other things and essential oils are more of like a side thing, I'd be a little bit concerned. Um, but if that's like all they do or, you know, one of two things that they do, I would feel better about that. Um, that ensures that they're going to have the database to read a lot of the chemical um, properties that come up in oils and uh, understand what they mean. 
Uh, another thing I would look for is just, are they completely unaffiliated? Um, any third party lab, obviously that has ties to certain companies is going to look a little bit more sketch and you might need to do some more digging into that. Um, so just making sure that that lab has no ties or, you know, uh, dog in the race, if you will, or whatever the phrase is, um, no, whatever. Yeah. No dog in the fight. Um, just that they don't have any kind of, um, reason to somehow fudge the, you know, information on the sheet, which really isn't done, but just in case, um, Another thing to see would be if their lab follows all regulations, um, just ensuring that they're doing everything correctly in their processes of, um, you know, cleaning the equipment, blah, 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 and uh, just what they do and even how they receive the um, oils and, you know, send them out, just making sure their process is completely up to code. Also, another thing that's worth asking is just looking at how reputable are they as a lab um, compared to like other scientists and labs. Um, this one is often negated, but I think it's really worth looking into and putting some weight in that the people who are trained the most in essential oils who are all very um, unaffiliated with brands, if there are some scientists and chemists that are all agreeing that um, certain labs are not up to code and are not doing the correct standards or, you know, that sort of a thing. I would look into that honestly and would be pretty concerned if they are not reputable among other um, very professionally trained uh, chemists, um, just because that's a little bit concerning. Another thing worth looking into is just trying to find any um, GCMS testings that were adulterated from that company. Um, were there aren't any that you can find that did prove that their oils are adulterated? And then um, how did they recover from that? Like, what did they do about it? Um, because it does happen sometimes that oil companies will be adulterated, but like how they handle it is a really big thing. Um, and how they, you know, if they say, yes, we need to do better at this, um, do they try to cover it up? Um, have they changed any processes or anything to keep the problem from happening again? Um, so I wouldn't 100% rule out a company just because they've had um, adulterated oils in the past. I would be more concerned about how they handled it, how they moved on from it, and what things they implemented to make sure that those things wouldn't happen again. So, okay, there you go. There are a couple things right there just to try to help you. Oh, and one more thing, I kid looking at my notes, I forgot about it. Um, okay, so here are uh, three different things to bonus <laughs> of uh, where not to buy from. Okay, so number one is Amazon. I would not recommend buying your oils off of Amazon, even if it's from a reputable company that you, you know, vetted and deemed uh, good because Amazon has very, very, very lax standards in um, verifying the quality of the product that they're shipping out and they don't take any kind of legal or financial responsibility at all for the products that come through and get shipped out. So it is extremely easy for someone to take that bottle, put something else inside of it and just put an untampered with seal on top of it to make it look untampered with, even though it has been. So there is no one verifying that when you're buying off of Amazon. So I would not recommend ever buying off of Amazon. I go into more detail about this on a post on my blog. Okay, the second place is grocery stores. Again, even if it is a brand that is good and deemed um, you know, reputable. I would not trust it because there are typically no one, uh, there's no one on staff there that is trained with essential oils. Um, and oftentimes they don't get sold as fast. So they're going to be sitting there longer, which means they're going to be oxidizing. They're going to be losing their quality. Um, they're obvious. They're, um, most of the time not, um, like they're not handled correctly and they're in direct sunlight or different things like that. Um, again, just because someone is not on staff that knows how to work with essential oils, they typically uh, just don't handle them correctly. So the chances of the quality of the oil that you're getting at the store is going to be a lot less. Um, and then just a caution too for, um, this isn't like across the board, but just a, you know, just a caution. I would caution um, buying from companies that primarily sell to food and beverage or like perfumery places because oftentimes their like end goal is different for uh, that clientele. They're gonna be a lot cheaper for sure, but um, oftentimes the those industries in particular are looking for oils that are gonna have the exact same taste or smell um, to keep their products consistent. So um, one of the ways to ensure that is to like redistill oils, which you're gonna be losing a lot of the benefits of it 
uh, and the purity of the oil when you're doing that. So that's part of the reason why it's cheaper, but they're oftentimes not anywhere near the same quality that other, you know, brands are uh, because of that, because they're trying to just get it to be the same smell or taste across the board. And actually with um, natural essential oils, it should smell slightly different or, you know, uh, taste slightly different, whatever. Um, kind of per bottle because like I said before, all of those things play into um, whether or not the oil um, is ha like how it turns out, like the soil, the air, the you know humidity that day, the rainfall, all of those things um, are going to change it. And obviously those things can't really always be the same. So uh, it should smell a little bit different each time. Okay, that's it. Um, if I miss anything, let me know. If you have any questions, comment below.